What is real? How do you define real? You can't jump into cash. Cash is trash. What do you do? You get out. Beautiful Bitcoin. Beautiful nature. The sun comes up. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's going to be a beautiful day. The birds chirp. The flowers open. Forest creatures scurry about. It's beautiful. Nature is beautiful. The beautiful sun shines its beautiful energy as warm, beautiful light on the beautiful earth. And beautiful life, beautifully, comes alive. Inside the sun, the immense work of intense gravity creates the energy that makes all this beauty possible. On Earth, in the glowing radiance of the sun, beautiful variety blossoms. The trees grow tall, the herbs spread across the forest floor, the grasses take the plains, the oceans and seas teem with life. Insects swarm, birds flock. It's beautiful. Everywhere you look on planet Earth, there is beauty. Beautiful humans, beautiful civilization. Humans are beautiful. Human civilization is beautiful. Civilization is what emerges from what is unique about humans. No other animal specializes as we do. No other creature develops knowledge at the scale that we do. Knowledge so vast that within each human, it is unique. We apply our unique knowledge in the specialized work we each do. We can offer the results to other humans, creating tremendous variety and beauty in what is produced. That is civilization, and it is beautiful. We make beautiful things for each other. Beautiful clothes, beautiful homes, beautiful furniture, beautiful art, beautiful, delicious, nutritious food, beautiful music, beauty everywhere. Like nature itself, the aggregate is so beautiful, it cannot even be fathomed by any one individual. Civilization's beauty spreads through the peaceful and consensual exchange of work between beautiful people who create and those who appreciate the beauty of what they created. This is the beauty of civilization and of humanity. Beautiful money. To achieve this beauty, we each need to be comfortable and confident in the knowledge that when we work to create something beautiful for somebody else, we will be able to trade that work of ours for their appreciation and their work in return. That is honor. However, as we are so specialized, it may not be the work of that individual who obtained our creation that we want in return. It may be the work of another individual who in turn may want the work of yet another individual who may want the work of yet some other group of individuals in return. Money solves this. It is money that makes beautiful civilization possible. It allows each of us to focus on the things that we are very best at and to make them as beautifully as we possibly can. But not just any money will do. To maintain a beautiful civilization, which requires honest, beautiful work, money must itself be created with good, honest work. Beautiful money for beautiful people doing beautiful work in a beautiful civilization, on a beautiful planet. Ugly money. Tragically, we live in a world of ugly money. Money that does not reward creative hard workers for their beautiful work. Money that is used to obtain and sustain power by those who don't work. Money for those who take what they want and offer back something ugly that took no work to create. Money which is nothing at all money that is a swindle. This ugly money makes our once beautiful civilization ugly. It turns us from beautiful, hard-working, creative beings 
into screaming beggars demanding that the makers of this ugly money print it in excess without any work and give it to us, not for work, but for checking a box on a ballot. This is how the beauty of our civilization is wrecked. Bitcoin is a beautiful comeback. For those of us who love beauty, who wish to bring it back into our civilization, we need beautiful money to wash away the ugly money. Bitcoin is beautiful money. Bitcoin can only be created by good, honest work. It cannot be created effortlessly by those with money and power. No wonder then that those who do no work fear and hate Bitcoin. They fear and hate the prospect of doing work. They cannot give themselves more Bitcoin. They cannot promise to give away any of it that they don't have, and they cannot control it. This is what makes Bitcoin beautiful. It restores hope to workers and creators who wish to work to create the most beautiful things they can. Bitcoin restores the opportunity to be rewarded for honest, beautiful, creative work. Bitcoin isn't just any money. It is just money. Just as nature's beauty flourishes in the beautiful sunlight, human civilization's beauty can flourish in the beautiful light of beautiful Bitcoin, supporting beautiful work, leading to beautiful creations, making beautiful lives for beautiful, happy humans, frolicking beautifully about the beautiful earth, at peace with one another, in harmony with the environment, in all of nature's beauty and glory, for beautiful day after beautiful day. Wow, I love that. Joining me tonight and reciting that wonderfully poetic piece is the ever always calm, soothing, and wise Tomer Strohlight, author of the new book, Why Bitcoin, which is aesthetically delightful in ways not possible in blogs. Tomer is also the editor-in-chief at Swan Bitcoin. Tomer Strohlight, welcome back to the Bitcoin Matrix podcast for the third time. How are you, my friend? I'm, I'm doing okay. It's good to be here. Yeah, uh, it's great to nice reconnect. To yeah, uh, this time on Zoom, last time in person, we, we got to meet at Bitcoin 2022 in Miami. Yeah. Um, how did you enjoy Miami? Um, it was amazing. It was, uh, it was like an out of this world event. It was uh, surreal in some respects. Uh, Bitcoiners being such a young movement of people and so scarce uh, and then suddenly to have them all together and have a big impact and to be everywhere. And, and for all these people who you've heard about and read about and talked with only through technology to actually see them in flesh and blood in person uh, was, a, was an extraordinary experience, really moving and f formed a lot of um, what I feel are deep connections with people, like instant friendships. Uh, there was lots of love and lots of conversations that uh, that kept happening that wouldn't be conversations that would be set up through zoom so we went we went a lot deeper in talking about uh about bitcoin and and just getting to know each other as well so it was amazing really yeah it. uh i think it's kind of love to kind of note a bit like what was your setup like for staying there uh, uh, yeah so for me i mean this was such a big dream so i i actually got an airbnb with uh with three people again i've never really met any bitcoiners but with three people who i knew who i hadn't met in person so fractal encrypt uh brecky uh and uh knut van home and so we had this pad on south beach uh where the four of us kind of hung out and we were all doing our own thing but we tried to stay together as much as we could and we really you know we were we woke up in the morning and had coffee together and it was <laughs> it became this regular routine uh to have breakfast uh, or coffee with Bitcoiners. We didn't really, we went out for breakfast because we didn't have any food in the place. Coffee was about the only thing we had. Uh, but just to, to wake up and start talking about what the day was like, it was really interesting. And we all became good friends. Yeah. Uh, I was fortunate to run into you guys. Yeah. Uh, for, I think, a little bit of cocktails after your dinner. And it was great to run into everybody. Uh, I got to check out your flat. The roof deck was amazing. It was, uh, I think we watched Bitcoin as general generational wealth, your film okay. up there. 
Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend people check that out. Um, that was really enjoyable. It wasn't the first time I saw it, but it was kind of a different setting to, to have it there and then get to chat with you guys about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what was it like getting out of Canada? And it's no big deal. I, I you know, I, I guess I, in I the think, sense of like that, yeah. just um, out of all the places you went to, I think Florida contrasts maybe uh, sort of what's the rules and, and maybe the norms of maybe like that was, was there any noticeable sort of change in, in for you, maybe externalities? I'm not saying with people you were with, but maybe the people you weren't with, was it different or, or yeah, I, well, listen, it, did you notice big, anything? South, South Beach, like it, it was as if their COVID had never happened it's amongst the Bitcoiners and there was nobody wearing masks, like what, whichever side of the political spectrum they were on, there was a tremendous gay pride thing going on on South Beach and people weren't wearing much and none of them were wearing, like if they were wearing masks, they, they were uh, <laughs> very kinky masks. They, were, mm. they weren't meant to protect you from, uh, from, from a virus. And so uh, it was like, it, it was a, it was a, a different world, a crazy world. It had a very Vegas like quality to it. I'd never been to South beach, Miami uh, before. So that was, um, that was a new experience for me in general, but it, it was like, it was really nice. Uh, what can I say? We we had a good time. I don't know anyone who ended up getting uh, sick from the conference, and uh, it was just uh, it was one night after another. I, I think for me, I I've been involved in Bitcoin since 2013, but I really came out w producing content uh, in uh, I guess March of last year, March of 21. And uh, there was enough stuff going on in my life that I was getting invited to to some pretty um, cool events. And so like my first night there, uh, I got to meet tons of people who I'd read their books and followed them and all this stuff. And it was, and that was kind of, that was, I think the surreal thing. It was like, oh gee, everybody's, everybody's really real and they're really here. And in person we're, we are who we, we're not different than our personas, right? There was just an authenticity that you could approach the person and they were the same person in person as they were when they were appearing on podcasts and other things like that. There, there's nothing phony. There's just such an authenticity. I think that was really the powerful thing. Like you expect it. Everyone's a different character, right? Every, everyone, there's so many, like the, the, the most toxic or the most interesting, right? And everybody's got their own digs. And then you, and you didn't meet everybody the first night. So you'd suddenly bump into somebody at a restaurant or you would bump into them at a party. And, uh, and then the conversation would begin and who knows where it would go. Yeah. So it was really awesome. Yeah. I, I like the way you put it where, you know, Miami does, I think have that Vegas like vibe. It's, it's not my frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful city. It's exciting. And, what I loved about it, though, is, you know, you find the pockets of Bitcoiners and it's finding a little bubble and you can utilize this beautiful city around you, but you don't have to interact with everything and, and all of it. And you can just kind of make of it what you want. But uh, before we get into Bitcoin is Beautiful, I, I, I did uh, pick this piece because I was really inspired by I think I think the world needs more beauty right now. And by beauty, I, I think not just uh, maybe aesthetically pleasing to the eyes, but maybe to the soul and at a deeper level. Uh, yeah. I don't think I get that being in Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. So coming out of that, uh, I come home almost, you know, my family, I get that in, but you know, just the world around me, uh, I'd like to have more uh, beauty in it, more warmth, more yeah. compassion. I do wanna know before we get into the piece, the two shows you were on before, which I absolutely adore, episode um, 74, Rich or, rich or poor, Bitcoiners have what money can't buy. Um, that one's really uh, special to me. It was our first show together, and I just could have loved that that topic. Episode eighty, along the same lines, Bitcoin is for everyone. Um, you know, these both these shows are highly played, um, and and I love them both. I hope people go back to them. Um, but you know, I'd love to hear what your inspiration was for your piece. Bitcoin is beautiful. Yeah, it came from a few places it, it first came from after all these years of studying bitcoin i really do feel that bitcoin is beautiful and much in the same way as i say in the same way as nature is beautiful and we humans give humans a hard time we talk about the environmental impact that we have and we look at the we look at the dark side of humanity right we look at the crimes that we commit and some of the terrible things but i really i'm 
I'm in love with humanity. I think mm-hmm. human humanity has achieved greatness and beauty, and I'm happy and proud to be a human being uh, and to be part of the human race. And one of the things that we learn when we study Bitcoin, and it takes us into studying money, and it takes us into studying these things, is that when we have good money, we're beautiful. And when the money collapses, we're ugly. Right? Money is this thing that holds our civilization mm-hmm. together. And I wanted to... Um, and I wanted to bring it back into nature because it's a natural, uh, like, I think money is a natural phenomenon in the same way that flocks are natural, you know, the birds fly in V's and it's, it's kind of beautiful or the insects gather in certain ways and the trees grow in certain ways and the humans gather in certain ways and our destiny, it's our nature is to live in peace with one another and we can do that with through money because we don't have to develop a deep relationship with everybody else we can trust each other because we don't have to trust each other it's a very interesting thing if, if your money you know the used say, expression used to be is his money green right and I, I think now we'll say are his bitcoins orange and uh and there is just this beauty that you know that you're receiving good money and that the money is a promise that stands for something. So you'll surrender peacefully something in exchange for money. You won't have to question it. But we're not dealing in that world right now, right? We're we're in a dark time where the money is got by hook and crook and and crooks are the ones who are kind of in charge of the of the money and you know the kindest thing you could say about them is that they know not what they're doing because they're not very smart. But what they're doing is very harmful to civilization and to humanity's beauty and to the planet's beauty. And and Bitcoin fixes this. And so it's going to take time, but it's it's the right thing at the right time. You know, we couldn't it couldn't have existed until we had invented computers and discovered electricity. And so, you know, there's we're coming of age where we're now mature enough in our knowledge that we can build a beautiful perpetually beautiful civilization through Bitcoin. And you know, I try to, I, I make these predictions and some people are skeptical about them and some people love the imagery but say they don't know if it's going to be true. And again, I don't either, but I think it is. And that's certainly why I work towards advocating and explaining Bitcoin and its beauty as, as opposed to it's another get rich quick scheme. I think it's something that enriches the earth. And when we talked about Bitcoiners having what money can't buy, in that earlier episode that you referenced, um, there's so much more to life than the things you can buy with money. It's the things that you can buy with money end up feeling shallow when you're lacking the things that money can't buy, like friendship and integrity and intelligence and honor. And um, and so before I ramble on too much, this for me was this piece, and I, I wanted to I wanted to describe the beauty of Bitcoin, and because Bitcoin's not visible and you can't hear it and you can't touch it, I needed to paint the beauty in a different way. And I, and I wanted to start with the beauty of nature because to me, nature is, is the most beautiful thing that exists. It's just spectacular. Everywhere you look on the planet Earth, you, can, like, you open your eyes and it's, there's rarely something ugly that you see. It's just, it's amazing how we have evolved or been, <laughs> been created to look at everything and be able to appreciate its beauty and to listen to everything and be able to appreciate the beauty of it, its sound. So it, we live on a beautiful planet and we're a beautiful part of it. And Bitcoin helps us become a more beautiful part of it and, and for, for us to enjoy the beauty and to be able to be beautiful. So, it's, um, so I really wanted to emphasize, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think almost every line of the, of the piece uses the word intentionally, repetitively. Usually it's not a good style of writing to use the same word over and over again. But I really wanted to drive home the point. And, uh, and, that's, what, and that's what I sought to do. I actually, I, I wasn't terribly happy with how this turned out, but it took me some time and there were lots of other things going out, going around in my life. And I said, okay, well, I just, I do have to put it out. It's not bad, but I didn't feel it was perfected. And then, um, the director of Bitcoin's generational wealth, Matt Hornick, reached out to me. He said he really liked it. A few other people reached out to me and said they really liked it. You included. Uh, but Matt said, let's make a movie out of it. So Matt, mm. is like, so Matt edited it down to a different length. He wrote original music for it. I've heard, I, I recorded uh, this briefer version of it, and he's putting together a video for it, which I haven't seen yet, but I'm very excited for it because 
he does such beautiful work. And, yeah. uh, and so uh, there will probably, uh, within a couple of weeks or a few weeks time, be a uh, beautiful Bitcoin short, like five minute f film or yeah. whatever you call it, video. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with this piece. Uh, I love that you, when touching on it, brought up humanity, the human race, because uh, I, I believe there's one race. I love that this piece and some other pieces we're going to touch on really try to go for inclusiveness. Um, what I also noticed here is, you know, I, I, I've thought of Bitcoin as, the, as an arc. Another piece we're going to get into kind of maybe right. thinks of it as a, as a lighthouse here. Um, you have a passage where it says inside the sun, the immense work of intense gravity creates the energy that makes all this beauty possible. <clears throat> Maybe Bitcoin's kind of like a sun. Uh, I didn't know about the intense gravity part and I was just kind of stuck on that for a while, but I do want to reread a certain section here. We can offer the results to other humans creating tremendous variety and beauty in what is produced. That is civilization and it is beautiful. We make beautiful things for each other Beautiful clothes, beautiful homes, beautiful furniture, beautiful art, beautiful, delicious, nutritious food, beautiful music, beauty everywhere. Like nature itself, civilization's beauty spreads through the peaceful and consensual exchange of work. Between beautiful people who create and those who appreciate the beauty of what they created. This is the beauty of civilization and of humanity. How much do you think people appreciate beauty right now? When I read this piece, I was very, this part of it, I was inspired, but I don't see that happening a lot in the world today. I see it in mm, individuals. Yeah. yeah. Um, Michael, but individuals aren't building all the houses, the cookie cut yeah. houses in America, and they're not building the malls or, or whatever the experiences yeah. are in, in America and maybe some other places in the world. And I just, I don't see that exchange of beauty all the time. Right. No, my, my goal was to remind us that this is possible. Like we are living in dark, ugly times. And so we don't see it. And um, and I would encourage people to read a book like Atlas Shrugged, which which has characters who are good and evil uh, in as creators and as destroyers so that they can concretize in their mind what it's like to live generously and creatively mm -hmm. and intelligently versus it's opposite the opposites of those of those things but i was just trying to write a short poem uh or like again not, not a poem but a short piece of prose and and so i wanted to illuminate those things in the brevity that i could there uh and 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 so i listed a variety of different things that people can make that have been beautiful in the past and can be beautiful now and can be beautiful in the future but we are living in this minimalist design thing where the where it's a minimalism not of design but minimalism of effort right it's like mm -hmm. eh, you want a stand-up desk it's going to be a rectangle with four with four legs right you want a microphone it's just gonna you know there, there's no beauty here the nuts and bolts are, are sticking out everything's made as inexpensively as possible and we kind of slid down mm -hmm. this uh how cheap can you make it um thing and we did it with everything right our food is cheap but it lacks nutrition and it's not tasty and we we've we've lost a beauty uh that temporarily uh, i guess is the point right we can restore it it's not destroyed forever nature heals right nature is a cycle and so even when you clear cut a forest it can grow back if you do not if you just stay out of its way and i, I think that's it like get out of the way of human beings through regulation and government and totalitarianism and let them be and naturally human beings are beautiful and uh they have their you know they have their dark side because nature does too nature Nature is ruthless in many ways in achieving its beauty, but but it is interesting. Like, why do why do things evolve to be? Why do they come out to be so beautiful? They don't. Like, I don't have the answer. Mm. Uh, but but if, for whatever reason, everything's beautiful, and food grows to be delicious. Um, and so I could get scientists and religious pe and you know faith based people here, and they would debate it. Um, mm -hmm. As to, as to why, but but nobody would debate that it is. Like nobody would say, well, the food isn't delicious. They wouldn't say things aren't beautiful. They would just have different theories as to yeah. why we perceive these things uh, in an appreciative way. 
but again, now like I'm kind of going on onto a bit of a tangent, I think, relative to what you were asking. Uh, my inspiration is that people would read this and say, "There's beauty that's worth working for," There's, mm. and, mm-hmm. and I want to be a part of a beautiful <laughs> world, and I and I want to connect to human. The, the other big picture thing for me is, as as you mentioned, it is the connection to the whole of humanity. We we maybe went a little too far with this uh, individualism mm-hmm. notion, uh, and I, I'm a firm believer in individual rights mm-hmm. and that they shouldn't be violated, but right. I, I do realize that a greater whole comes out of the thing, which, mm-hmm. is, which is all of humanity. And when you have achieved your basic needs, one of the things, maybe we will talk about the thing we talked about before the show, one of the things that emerges is your desire to be helpful to other human beings. You view that as a personal value to see humanity succeed. And many people may not be there yet in their lives, but I think it comes with age and it comes with a certain amount, measure of success that you say, okay, well, now that I've checked off all these things on my bucket list or I've experienced all these things that I thought uh, I'd always be chasing, I've satiated my hunger for those things. My, my desire is actually to see other people enjoy lives, to be able to look and vicariously enjoy life through seeing other people happy rather than to vicariously s- experience misery and fear and anxiety by seeing other people in pain in poverty in suffering that's interesting um i want to read another um portion here beautiful money to achieve this beauty we need to be comfortable and confident in the knowledge that when we work to create something beautiful for somebody else we will be able to trade that work of ours for their appreciation and for their work in return that is honor yeah. Do you, what, what, where do you see honor in our society today? Well, I, I, I certainly don't see it in politics, but I do see it in lots of other places um, in the world. And you see it in the day-to-day exchange between honest people. Right? The, the words come from the same root. Um, and mm. you know, when an Uber driver picks you up, right? Like he's taken his time or she's taken her time to make a buck to get you from point A to point B because you don't have a car because you're in Miami and or you're because you're, you're drunk or just because you don't want to park the car. And here's someone who's providing, who's giving you their time, right? And they're doing what they said they would. You ask them to take you from this point to that point and they do it and it's honorable and they bring you and they show up in a clean car and they respect you and you should respect them in return. And that's honor, right? And they get money. And why and and then they can buy something with the money that they need that they want and they may get an uber ride from somebody else but probably not and it's not what you have uh they're not after a piece of bitcoin writing for me they're after something else for their family and this is the beauty of what money allows it's this chain reaction of honor of honorable conduct peaceful conduct of doing what you say you'll do and having an agreement uh beforehand about it and uh, and so it's a beautiful thing, right? It allows this peaceful civilization where we can just push a couple of buttons on our phone, and you know, magical things start to happen. And it's not just about technology, right? Like the the flow of resources is is what is what money moves. Money has this equal and opposite reaction to value, right? Money is value that goes in one direction, and services or goods are rendered in the opposite direction. So there's a physics behind it. And uh, it's complicated. It's, it's very complicated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I think it's extra complicated for us who live in this time of history because the money is made up and it comes out of nothing. It comes out of thin air and there's no work to put it in. Like back when it was gold or coin, you knew it, it had this, it had to have come from somebody mining it. It had to come from somebody doing some work. And there was a chain of work, the miner to the goldsmith, to the coin minter, to the you know, to the coin minters, shoesmith, to the, you know, it just, it, it went along these, these paths before it came to you and then you spent it for something else. And the same is true with Bitcoin only on, on steroids as the expression goes, but it's not true of the fiat money that just comes into existence out of nowhere when you walk into a bank and you say, I'd like to buy a house. So we're, so this money that we use today is so disconnected from the flow of goods and services um, that it, 
that our conception of the idea of money is so distorted and that's why we don't understand it and that's why there's this renaissance of uh, economics taking place amongst Bitcoiners who are saying, hold on a minute, right? And, and like the old, <laughs> the old guard were the gold bugs, right? But they were like historically irrelevant because nobody would listen to them because gold had been captured and, and had failed as money. And so, you know, they were like, we need to bring back the gold standard and everybody's like, but it doesn't work, right? And then the Bitcoiners come around and say, we've, di we've discovered something that does work and it, it's not seizable and it's not capturable and it's not censorable and, it all, and it's transportable and divisible and verifiable and decentralized and all these beautiful things about it. Um, and many gold bugs did wake up and say, oh, geez, wow, this is finally the thing that uh, we talked about. And some didn't. Some are still fighting the war, saying they're clinging to the past and they're trying to bring back the past. But that's that's so much harder. That's like reversing the arrow of time, right? That's like saying, let's bring back candlelight and get rid of electric light, mm -hmm. or let's bring back horse and buggy instead of the automobile, because there's some things I don't like about the automobile. So they're, they're kind of in this strange denial phase. They're either scared of the technology or unwilling to learn it or so committed to the past that they are like living, they're living in the past, but the past doesn't present itself in the present, right? They're, they're just in this yeah. terrible metaphysical war against time, the arrow of time, and you cannot go backwards in time. Although maybe Satoshi was a time traveler. Oh, Peter Schiff but... keeps trying. He's been mm -hmm. wrong then, he's wrong now. Yeah, just uh, he keeps getting more and more wrong by a zero every now and then, and he celebrates every time that the Bitcoin price takes a little dip to, to, to something that would that he said it never would achieve years prior. So he's just he's hopeless, unfortunately. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I redraft my episode with relevant Peter Schiff because he's been mm -hmm. right all along, mm -hmm. and, and much more informative, uh, right. especially around Bitcoin. Uh, you know, in terms of the ugliness, I do see what seems like more screaming in the world, yeah. more demands, yeah, less work, more. Yeah. Um, we're gonna solve all the problems with with voting. Um, I want to read. Fiat doesn't fix anything, right? And yet we keep trying or some people keep trying. And so we have to, it's going to have to reach a boiling point where it, where it mm. fails completely rather than, and, and people widely acknowledge that it's failed. And I, I do think that's what's happening. More and more dominoes are falling. More and more people are like, well, you know, you said there wouldn't be inflation. Then you said it would be low. Then you said it would be transitory. Now you say it's going to be around for a long time. Now you say you can't control it with the, with the tools you were given to say that you can control it. So it's like, it's clearly... <laughs> a lie I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly a theory that doesn't work yeah. in practice it's not a good theory so it's I, I'm, a shitty theory i'm starting to think it's masterful and they're just very clever at well, um, they're desperate they just they're desperate of course it. i think they're definitely desperate but i think they're very good at, at kicking the can down the road and getting mm. the majority of the populace to sort of buy into the to latest reason and go along with it and yeah. I just don't know you know, if that burns out or fades away and how long that takes. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. I think it's inevitable, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to be, I'm not sorry, but I'm cynical about whether it is cynical, but I'm, I'm pes like, I think it's almost a, a optimistic if it all doesn't blow up, but I see it as cynical because they get to keep going with, with the program. Uh, I yeah. do. Oh, wait. Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I think we could do a whole show on that. And, um, but I, would, I want to stay on track a little bit here. Um, I want to read this part of uh, the piece. Uh, so my last question on um, this piece. Bitcoin is beautiful money. Bitcoin can only be created by good, honest work. It cannot be created effortlessly by those with money and power. No wonder then that those who do not work fear and hate Bitcoin. They fear and hate the prospects of doing work. They cannot give themselves more Bitcoin. They cannot promise to give away any of it that they don't have, and they cannot control it. This is what makes Bitcoin beautiful. It restores hope to workers and creators who wish to work to create the most beautiful things they can. Bitcoin restores the opportunity to be rewarded. Bitcoin isn't just any money. It is just money. My question here is, when you say just, is this an allude? Uh, alluding to justice yes yeah that's what I meant by it. 
Um, that's kind of what I got out of it. And I, it really, I, I kind of stuck on this point for hours, maybe days, just thinking about it. One anecdote that comes to mind is I was listening heavily on clown on another show. Uh, I think it was a libertarian podcast and he was telling a story about, um, being in the military and wanting to go visit you know, his, his grandma, or I don't know if it was him, but he was telling some story. And the grandma in this story passed away. And can I leave base this weekend to go, you know, to the funeral? And uh, he doesn't even work during the weekends on base, but you know, you need permission to leave base. And he needs uh, eight signatures to leave the base for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the eight signatures is away for the weekend. And, you know, it gets a phone call last minute on Friday. Hey, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, Tommy's out of town. He'll be back on Monday. Maybe you can go the following weekend. And, it, you know, you're following protocol. And I'm not getting into military, uh, whether yeah. they should break protocol, but it just doesn't seem like a just world in a lot of ways. People mm -hmm. seem like carrying well, that, out that orders. Me, yeah, that to me is an irrational world as opposed to a ju justice and rationality do align. But it's it, what you're describing is just closer to this in, inhuman mechanism mechanism right it, it's like and, and this isn't that's not about the money that's about people have checked out uh to a point where they're not human <laughs> like they're not humane right? i think it's about the money though I, I think i get that from knut like knut's von home this sort of if you can't if you if you can't think long term mm -hmm. and i'm not getting it doesn't mean about being wealthy i mean just think long-term in economically of save for your future, mm -hmm. you kind of live more like an animal. You're less humane. Well, I mean, so this to me is, it's, but I think, yeah, there I is think a culture. There's a cultural problem, which is that people throw themselves, uh, hide behind rules. Mm. Right. They, I, mm -hmm. and they say, they say like, I'm in a structure and this isn't just military. I recently had to spend a lot of time in a hospital. I wasn't the patient, but someone I dearly care about, was and following orders is a very a very strict rule there right like you know the doctors issue the orders and the nurses follow the doctor's orders that there's not a lot of room for leeway and so a lot of times cold things can happen um and and there's also resource limitations and the oh, one yeah. rule is they're allowed to take a break so there's a lot of there's a lot of these situations where humaneness um that ought to be part of our culture. We ought to treat each other humanely. And yet we don't, we, um, and we're all guilty of it at times, right? I think this is part, and, but I don't know that I blame that entirely on fiat. I think, I think I, you know, something's got, yeah, I don't know if I blame it all our, on fiat, yeah, but I was just in the hospital. In our love for each other and we should treat each other kindly right. with love at every point in time that we're interacting with somebody. We should always say, thank you. Like what, What's the big deal, right? We should always be grateful for whoever is providing this. Like people aren't, no matter what their job is, they aren't beneath you. They're a human being and you're a human being. Yeah, I mean, my father was just in the hospital for three weeks as he, as, I mean, I, I think they performed an unneeded surgery on him or a surgery that he was mm -hmm. suited for. And then systemically, it just, everything in there was, punishing him more than helping yeah. him and they were all following person. protocol and you know uh, maybe helping this organ but hurting that organ whatever it was and everyone's yeah. siloed and there's an inhumanity it was so inhumane it. it's clinical and um, mechanical and i i have this same criticism of our education system which it which doesn't treat it, it doesn't yeah. raise human no. beings it ra it raises people who know who, people who pass standardized tests Follow um, orders, right, uh, and, and end up following orders, and then end up being the can stay in line for eight hours a day. Yeah, and then um, they end up being the people who are inhumane when they grow up. Mm. Uh, so, is that it's not that surprising? We've trained them to be to be this way. So, I, I think this is one of the things I do believe Bitcoin fixes this, and Bitcoin is generational wealth. That's the future that I projected, and people, you know, and some people said it's beautiful, <laughs> and some people said, well, where do you get off suggesting that there's a correlation or a connection between these things? And that's that's a three-hour show just mm -hmm. in and of itself. Um, fair enough, and I agree. Uh, I do want to turn to your latest book, um, right. Why Bitcoin? Uh, I'm looking at it here. It's, it's beautiful. 
It is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. There's a lot going on in terms of, I'm not saying it's busy, but like a lot of different kinds of artwork throughout the book mm -hmm. and sort of notations and quotes. Um, what inspired you to put to this, this all together as a book? It's, you know, th these things come from crazy places. Uh, the artist uh, who goes by the name Chief Monkey, mm -hmm. Uh, he did a work of art called the Bitcoin Baba Kakra, which is like this uh, Buddhist uh, thing. I'm, I'm looking around for it. I have it somewhere here. Um, and uh, and I bought it and I thought it was great. And I was talking to him and Yonat Vax, who was his co-creator on the book. And he was like, Tomer, you basically wrote a book. Why don't if I could make a book from my work of art, you make a book, make a book out of why Bitcoin of the series. And I'm like, well, I only really want to do something as beautiful as an artwork. So I'll make you a deal. I'll make the book if you make an artwork that is a companion piece to the book. And so the cover of the book is this artwork that he and I worked on conceiving. And then he created for, um, we spent a couple of months even uh, thinking it up. He ended up, uh, you know, it was at the Bitcoin conference in Miami for auction and he mm. got a very decent price for it. So I, I was thrilled for him and, he put my signature on the back of it as well. So it's a, it's a nice little collector's item and it's all about Satoshi meditating on 21 different ideas, which is, um, so there's like 22 Satoshis. There's a 20, there's one Satoshi in the middle and then there's all these, he radiates out into 21 different Satoshis, each meditating on a different icon and each icon representing a different topic from, uh, from the essays in the book. And so every, man, many of the essays in the book will feature the icon that's from the artwork in it uh you can get just for your listeners if you want to get the ebook you can get it for free at uh events.swanbitcoin.com slash why bitcoin you can download a free copy there and if you want to order a copy of the book uh I'm, you'll put it in the show notes because you can you can order physical copies either in soft copy or hard copy still but i'm not yeah, the, yeah. plug selling the book um, yeah i love the book it is beautiful it's kind of stunning uh, I'd love for you to read a few pieces from the book and we'll sure. touch on them. Uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of read through the book until we get to the piece, meaning I'll read the chapter titles okay. uh, before. So, cause I do think that, um, that kind of just tells it's yeah, very a very flow. I spent, book. I, so I, I will just say this. I ended up, so I ended up working for months on the artwork with chief monkey, just conceiving it. He did, he did the actual work again. And then, um, and then I worked with an editor who was very, who laid it out so it was all he was also the designer of the book but he's also a very good editor and we ended up rewriting reordering even retitling many of the essays from the original series uh and it, and it came together really nicely at the end and he insisted on us putting the final piece in there which wasn't originally a part of the why bitcoin series but was another one of these beautiful pieces that had come out of me one day and he he said it's really nice let's let's finish make sure to finish the book with that one yeah I, I do think that was a great addition to the book. First chapter, chapter, why Bitcoin exists. Chapter two, why Bitcoin is unlike anything you've ever seen. Three, why choose Bitcoin. Four, why it takes both time and efforts, an effort to make Bitcoins. Five, why do you not need permission to use Bitcoin? Six, why Bitcoin's rules are enforced by math and physics. Seven, why nobody can stop Bitcoin. Eight, why Bitcoin is the path to economic stability. Nine, why Bitcoin is the way to save money. 10, why Bitcoin's buying power keeps rising. 11, why and how Bitcoin uses energy. 12, why Bitcoin's energy use benefits our environment. 13, why Bitcoin is the world's greatest gladiator. 14, why Bitcoin will end the greatest heist in history. 15, why civilization needs Bitcoin. 16, why Bitcoin is changing the world. And 17, I'll leave to you. All right, so 17 is called Why Bitcoin is the World's Most Inclusive Institution. Um, and it begins, inclusivity is good, but hard. Eliminating unjust discrimination in institutions seems like an unwinnable war. We see case after case of powerful decision makers discriminating on the basis of factors like age, race, and gender. While we all know this is a problem, we do not know how to solve it. 
we speak out against it, we protest, we pass laws, and we prosecute against it. However, in the end, the possibility of human irrationality means we can never entirely get rid of prejudice wherever people are in positions of power. But in Bitcoin, nobody is in charge. Bitcoin offers a novel solution to the problem of unjust discrimination. Bitcoin's unique design means that nobody is in charge of any aspect of it, even deciding who can use it. By having no one in any role with the power to discriminate, Bitcoin eliminates any and all possibility of such moral wickedness. Thus, it follows that everyone in the world can use Bitcoin, regardless of anything at all, including their age, their race, and their gender. No other institution in the world welcomes everybody to this degree. This makes Bitcoin the world's most inclusive institution. You do not need an invitation. You do not need to live in any particular country. You do not need a home address. You do not need photo identification. You can use it without ever needing to tell Bitcoin anything about yourself. In fact, you cannot even tell Bitcoin anything about yourself. Bitcoin unites us all. By making itself accessible to everyone in the world, Bitcoin becomes even more widely used every day. In the not too distant future, Bitcoin may even become the most widely accepted money ever. As there are no limits on who can use it, Bitcoin can bring everyone in the world together. It connects those with nice homes to those with no shoes on their feet. It gathers together people of all races, all genders, all religion, all ideologies, all abilities from all locations everywhere in the world. Bitcoin unifies all mankind within one system, exhibiting incorruptible integrity, eliminating unjust discrimination, and guaranteeing equal treatment for all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think that this sort of fits the theme that we're hitting on here in terms of inclusiveness. Um, and, you know, I like institutions really just aren't providing that today. This kind of gets at human scalability. And, you know, it seems to be the only thing in the world that could unite us all. So, what do you think about sort of the toxicity in the Bitcoin Twitter space or Bitcoin Bitcoiners? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's a necessary thing and I wouldn't even call it a necessary evil. It's a necessary good. Um, mm. the Bitcoin can only do these things that I've described here if its design is not compromised right? and people who choose, who say other people should be canceled, right? But Bitcoiners who are toxic don't say, here's who should not use Bitcoin. They say the opposite. They say you cannot cancel anyone from using Bitcoin. And so that's what makes it the most inclusive institution. And so they're misunderstood very often. And, um, but by keeping Bitcoin's design such that governments can't regulate it because governments discriminate. Right? Governments decide, governments censor things. Governments pick winners and losers. And the whole point of Bitcoin is it does not pick winners and losers. You might be a loser to your government, but you're not a loser to Bitcoin. And that's the beauty mm -hmm. of the thing, right? And, um, hmm. and, and that's why we will be toxic to the very end. You know, when I say, like, I include myself among those people who would be called toxic. But I've, I've written another essay called Bitcoiners are not toxic, they have integrity. And that and that's what that virtue is, right? I will not compromise on the rights of anybody to use Bitcoin. And, uh, and, and every other Bitcoiner believes in it. And the system is designed that way, right? The brilliance of the system, a system that everyone in the world can use. What was the feature that was left out of it so that everybody could use it is it has no usernames and it doesn't ask any demographics. It doesn't want to know because it doesn't matter. It's a basic human right to use money. And that's the way that Bitcoin is designed. I like how you talked about loser there. Um, you're not a loser to Bitcoin and, and I guess you're not a winner to Bitcoin. And it's not everyone is a winner or a loser. Well, um, everyone's a winner in Bitcoin, actually. <laughs> you know, like, and, and this, you don't win I meant at in the sense expense, of um, right, right. But I meant in the sense uh, that the network doesn't care how much you have or don't have. That's right. Yes, the and, network treats and there are no everybody winners in that sense. equally. And like right. the, everyone, you get the same rules. 
Yep. The rules are the same to everybody because it doesn't right. know that people exist, right? By not knowing that people exist, it can't discriminate. <laughs> right. And there's that, no special the parking spot of it. to fight yeah. over. The genius of it is there's no special privilege. And this is why the most privileged people in the world loathe Bitcoin because they're like, where do I get my free privilege? Where do I get to tell other people what to do? And it's like, you don't. And they're like, well, I don't like that. I make my living by telling other people what to do. It's like, well, we don't actually need you, right? And now we have a system where we can give you the boot. So yeah. go f yourself. <laughs> like, but that's 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 the right message to these people, right? Like, and th so if it's toxic, it's too bad. Like, the the polite message is you shouldn't rule over other people. They are human beings just like you. You don't want to be ruled over. Where do you get off trying to rule other people? And that's what Bitcoin won't allow. Yeah, I agree. Um, I would like to turn to chapter eight. Why Bitcoin is the path to economic stability. All right. Um, this piece, at first glance, seems a little different maybe than the other pieces I chose tonight, but um, I do think it fits in uh, in a way that we might touch on when you're done. Okay, I'll read it. Uh, why Bitcoin is the path to economic stability. There is no reliable stability in national currencies. In 2021, the Venezuelan Bolivar lost 99% of its value against the US dollar. Even the British pound experienced 17% volatility in ups and downs relative to the US dollar in the same period. In fact, when it comes to how they function, national currencies offer very little security, usability, predictability, and indeed stability. None offer much predictability of their supply and many, including the dollar, have seen massive supply increases in recent times. None are entirely resistant from theft by crooks or seizure from authorities. None are fully permissionless. Regulations exist that require owners to identify themselves and declare their intended uses. All of them operate only within specific jurisdictions, and none can have their supply verified independently. It is doubtful if even the authorities in charge of them know what supply exists. In summary, national currencies are not very stable at all. Yet Bitcoin is accused of being unstable. Quote, Bitcoin is extremely volatile, close quote, claim journalists, economists, and bankers. It is no wonder that they draw these conclusions when judging Bitcoin by the standard of unstable national currencies. Consider, however, if you were on a boat that was being tossed about by rough seas and were looking at a lighthouse on the shore, that lighthouse's position would appear extremely volatile, despite the fact that the lighthouse was perfectly stable. Here's why Bitcoin is actually like the lighthouse. Bitcoin is profoundly stable. Every detail in Bitcoin is the very essence of stability. No matter what the world has thrown at it, Bitcoin has kept all its promises. It has issued a precisely predictable supply exactly according to schedule. Its security has never been breached. It has allowed anyone in the world to use Bitcoin. It has allowed owners to spend their coins without restrictions. It has allowed anyone in the world with a basic computer to verify its supply for themselves without having to trust anybody else. There have been no exceptions. Bitcoin is therefore extremely stable. Bitcoin's adoption is a migration towards stability. When critics call Bitcoin volatile, it is not meant to be a compliment. They are implying that stability is preferable to volatility. This much is correct. They are just mistaken about what stability is Bitcoin's incredible stability and reliability is precisely what is attracting ever-growing numbers of people, corporations, institutions, and governments to adopt it to ever greater degrees. As Bitcoin's adoption increases, its value, as measured in dollars, rises profoundly, albeit with wild short-term fluctuations in its dollar-denominated price. But there is nothing about Bitcoin's actual nature that is fluctuating. Just like a lighthouse, Bitcoin remains perfectly stable. In light of all this, it is no surprise that Bitcoin is increasingly being chosen in place of national currencies. 
Bitcoin's steady and unbreakable assurances give the world a standard upon which we can trade with each other across any distance, in any amount, and over any period of time. Bitcoin's reliability is leading the world on a path towards greater economic stability. Yeah, um, the reason I, I, I love this piece, I, I included it for several reasons. Uh, first, I, I think, you know, we touch a lot on beauty and love and inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about sort of economic stability as relating directly to those. But I think that for people to get grounded, I, I think we're all craving, excuse me, craving stability. Mm -hmm. I think the world feels very volatile predictability, and unstable. Yeah. Predictability. The assurance of tomorrow. And I think there's a beauty in that. You can count on something. Yeah. Um, and and so I, I really wanted to stress that Bitcoin is the path to economic stability. Um, and uh, I love the, the analogy, consider however, if you were on a boat that was being tossed about by rough seas and we're looking at a lighthouse on the shore that lighthouse position would appear extremely volatile, despite the fact that the lighthouse was perfectly stable. I think a lot about this in terms of Bitcoin, one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. It's completely stable. It's the exchange rate with other fiat or other things or things you want to trade for that's moving around. Um, mm -hmm. And in that way, I see it as a real true barometer of the volatility in the world. It's mm -hmm. sort of reflecting uh, not just its own sort of monetization, but sort of the volatility in the world and the uncertainty mm -hmm. um, in our base language of money uh, yeah. because it's been fiat. And so it, it sort of shines a light oh. on fiat. But yeah. uh, I really crave stability. When I say that, I mean that in my family life. I, I love to have an exciting job, um, you know, or something like that. I, I, but at home, in, in my general surroundings, um, I would like what you're saying, predictability or repeatability. Um, for yeah. various reasons. Yeah. Yeah, Bitcoin has this nature to it, like nature. <laughs> Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, right? The sun rises every day and a block comes every 10 minutes roughly, right? Like na nature's not perfectly predictable. It'll rain sometimes, it won't rain at other times. But you know, on average, it'll rain a certain amount every year. And, uh, and Bitcoin delivers that kind of natural predictability, right? There's variation in it. The variation is what provides it with resiliency. And, um, and it's on the whole, when you zoom out, very predictable. Yeah. And I also, I didn't know how volatile, um, the Bolivar was in 2021, mm -hmm. yeah. that was sort of striking. And, um, so I, I really thought that was an interesting, um, sort of way of looking at Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to turn to why Bitcoin is worthy of being loved. Um, but first, uh, I'll read the titles a little bit more. So yeah. we, why Bitcoin is the world's most inclusive institution was chapter 17. Yeah. Chapter 18 is why Bitcoin extracts extraordinary talent. Chapter 19, why you shouldn't fear Bitcoin. 20, why Bitcoin is so complicated. 21, why Bitcoin can handle all the commerce in the world. 22, why Bitcoin's imitators are scams. 23, why Bitcoin is so much more than money. 24, why you need Bitcoin. 25, why Bitcoin is the new frontier. And 26, why Bitcoin is worthy of your love. Okay. <laughs> this is a short one. Um, and, and I'll start, there's a quote that I have kind of as a call out, uh, which says, to love money is to know and love the fact that money is the creation of the best power within you. And it's from Ayn Rand in the book Atlas Shrugged. Uh, 26, why Bitcoin is worthy of your love. The love of money. There is a saying that, quote, the love of money is the root of all evil, close quote. And Bitcoin is money. However, Bitcoin is reliable, sound, honest money. And as such, it is good for you, for humanity, and for the planet. What is love? How is love earned and sustained? To be loved, one must offer something of uniquely irreplaceable value. One must also never taint the love through betraying that value. One must be honest, allowing oneself to be evaluated without concealment. Anything less than complete transparency might be hiding something which undermines that love. 
Bitcoin is worthy. Bitcoin says to every individual on earth, and the rest of this article is a quote, and this is Bitcoin speaking to us. I offer you the greatest instrument for money that has ever existed, Bitcoin. My nature ensures this money's supply is limited and always verifiable to you. This money cannot be taken from you by force. You can send any of yours to whomever you want for any reason. This money can store the effort of your work for any length of time, including a time beyond your own life or the existence of your country. I am bound to keep these assurances by the inviolable laws of math and physics. Look upon me and you can verify all my claims. I do not ask for your trust. I hide nothing. I stand before you naked, open, and transparent. My programming is open and public. My history is public. You are welcome to keep copies of these and always verify their accuracy. If you find any flaw in my claims, you may change me. But the change must truly correct me, for I am watched over by millions of others, and they will prevent any change to me that will betray my promises. I will never reject you under any circumstances, no matter what actions you have taken before. I am here to be judged, but I do not judge you. I will never force you to accept me, let alone to love me. I will always remain here with my offer to you of all this, and I await patiently until you are ready. Very interesting piece here. Um, I think it's a great piece. I, I think that one of uh, my first question is why are there quotes on a lot of the text? What was Bitcoin that? Bitcoin speaking. Was... So it's, it's okay. It's got written, it. Yeah. It's Bitcoin is speaking. So we need to give to put it in quotes because that's the way English grammar rules work. Because that what that's in, it's a really interesting take. To, to be the voice of Bitcoin. I think you do it really well. What, what also came across here, this, this felt a lot like a marriage contract or in Jewish law, mm. ketuba. Mm. Um, it, it felt like sort of a declaration to the, in, in front of the community. Oh, right. Yes. You know, and, yeah. and I saw it, you know, in this case, it's between the money and the people. Between, yes. Yeah. But wow. How I saw, I saw it as the money and the individual person though the money speaking to the individual person wow. the person yeah. being everyone but you know yeah. you being the general understood and Bit but it's bitcoin's word is what's good right it's not it's not bitcoin doesn't appeal to a higher authority correct like like the right this is like it's saying this law supersedes everything this yeah. is all, all of this and i'm doing this i'm open i'm transparent i'm in front of the yeah. whole community yeah i never uh, thought of it that way but yeah um i want to touch on this Anne rand quote to love money is to know and love the fact that money is the creation of the best power within you. I, I I'm not sure I get it. Like I, <laughs> okay. I, 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 I understand, like I, I, I feel it. It's, it's out of context. Yeah, I, I mean, disagree. You need the whole context of it. And it is, um, so I would just encourage everyone to go and read. Uh, you can Google Francisco's money speech, Atlas Shrugged. And it's a, uh, it's like a 10 minute read of a speech. I, I, I encourage everybody to, to spend the 58 hours that it takes to read Atlas Shrugged. That might be a little bit of a tall order when you're, when, when you're trying to understand what the context of a single sentence is inside a podcast that you found yourself listening to. <laughs> so I'll, I'll accept something a little lesser, um, but it, the context is, uh, if you're gonna read the whole book, then maybe plug your ears. There's a, there's an, a party that uh, all these elites are at and there's this one character who delivers a speech about the nature of money. And he, ta he tackles in it this uh, claim that money is the root of all evil or the love of money is the root of all evil. And it's a, and it's a beautiful speech. Uh, and it's quite stunning. I mean, I, I think for many people who read that book, which is an epic book, this is, what, this is the most memorable portion of it or one of the most memorable portions of, of the book, the, the scene where he delivers a speech in a party and it's really well done. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to recreate it 
um, read it for yourself in your own voice. There's great audio books if that's what you prefer um, of this thing. And uh, you can probably find some rendition of it on YouTube. Uh, so that, so the, the context comes from that whole thing, but it, it, it's worthy of the, and it may be 15 minutes. Uh, so it's worthy of the whole thing to get the context. Yeah. It's a very interesting quote. Um, it's also interesting watching your work evolve over time and some of, mm -hmm. uh, the changes. So mm -hmm. I do want to read, uh, a quote from this piece, but from your medium version of this Very piece. Medic. Yeah. Okay. There is a saying that the love of money is the root of all evil. However, that saying refers to any individual's greed to personally obtain excessive amounts of it at any cost. Loving a system of good, sound, honest, and transparent money because it is good for you, for humanity, and for the earth cannot be evil. Loving it is the rational and emotional response to experiencing such a system of money. Bitcoin has earned the love of millions. It, if it hasn't yet earned yours, it awaits patiently for whenever you are ready. Right. Um, I thought that was an interesting um, way of, of, of coming at it. And I don't think that money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think the root of all evil is more rooted and more rooted in credit. And I don't think credit is 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 the root of all evil in the sense that I, I do think that capital allocators are important. Everyone who's accumulated capital mm -hmm. or a capital that's accumulated over time is not necessarily in the hands of the best people to take on entrepreneur entrepreneurial pursuits. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think it's money itself, the medium right. of exchange it that that is. It, yeah, creating it actually evil. turns out that that quote, which is alleged to come from the Bible, is is not that way in the Bible. In the Bible, it says that the love of money is a root of many evils. Something that mm. it's something mm -hmm. to that effect, right? It doesn't say it's the root of all evil. So somebody exaggerated that, and right. and and they did it probably to say, don't look at this other thing that is a root of my evil. <laughs> think think that it's about the money. So like, it's not always everything is the money. Um, and I think this is maybe the second time that it's come up in our conversation because Bitcoiners do tend to sometimes somewhat tongue in cheek, mm. but also kind of profoundly say Bitcoin fixes everything uh, or Bitcoin fixes fix this. Fix the money, fix fixes, the world. Yeah, fix the money, fix the world. I think and there's I a lot think, of truth in that. Yeah, there's a lot. It's not, it just, but, it's how far you carry it, right? And, yeah. and, and I think, I think from, for many people, like it's important that we be humbled in the lessons that we learn to not become hubristic and arrogant uh, if there's something in this movement that's really important that we remain truthful and right. uh, and so we sometimes need to get slapped down and taught a lesson or two here uh, but I but I digress you were asking a very specific question about maybe how my writing evolves or how I present no I, I was just saying it's interesting to see the different choices because I, I I'm like oh I love the way this one new plays but I'm like oh we we don't have that sentence maybe right but I, see I, fit, why I we gave all those direction. words to bit yeah I gave mm -hmm. the words to Bitcoin and I, in the book um, and I wanted I wanted the piece to be from Bitcoin not from me and so I wanted to quickly hand the microphone over and leave and you know this was this piece was not about me and and how smart I am. About Bitcoin. It was just about Bitcoin making its claim in the way that you read it, right? Like make it, that I didn't even really realize. Like if Bitcoin could speak to the world, what would it say? What's its offer? And that's its offer. I stand before you, transparent, authentic, ready to receive you whenever you are ready. I think that's a really beautiful thing. It'll wait. Bitcoin has all the time in the world. I, I, I agree. Um, I, I think the way I kind of see it with, with money is, is money is like a hammer. It's a tool. You can build a house with a hammer. Or you could destroy a house with a hammer. Yeah, I think a lot about like you, if you gave a two-year-old a hammer, they're not going to be able to build anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's great to give a two-year-old a hammer and let them destroy some things and, and, <laughs> and let them understand the power of their abilities. But I see it as like sort of like, you know, and, and the other way, I think about it, and I learned this from Bitcoin Tina is like, you know, a ladder didn't just sort of come from top down. Mm -hmm. It was emergent and or a chair is like, this is the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. And everyone goes out and goes to get the best way to do it. And fiat is not emergent. And it's kind of acting like the bad hammer in that example. And it right. just you, you might be using it, trying to use it for good. It's just it still won't lead to 
total absolute good because of the way it's designed and, and what it mm-hmm. does. Um, and uh, I, I, before we get to the, the, the last piece that I want to cover, um, I'd love to kind of ask you, um, it's been about what, seven, eight months since we talked uh, on the pod? I was hoping to have you on once a yeah. month. Um, yeah. Man, uh, 2022 has just been uh, a, a wild ride so far. Where, where, where are you now? Are you less or more optimistic than you were in maybe 2021? Yeah, no, I, my, my, my expectation that Bitcoin will bring about tr- global change and all the positivity that I've ever dreamed of is unchanged. I think we have to go through hard times. Right? Winston Churchill had a great line. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Right? The, the way out is through. There's no, uh, there's no way around. And we're going through stuff that's tough. But there is a light at the end of this tunnel. And Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is kind of that light, right? Or it's, it's, our, it's our light that shows us the way out uh, for many of the problems that we have. And we have to fix the other things about us too, right? It's not just buy, you know, I think some people oversimplify. It's not just buy and hold. Um, it's, it's hold and learn what Bitcoin allows you to do that you weren't allowed to do before, which is why the whole thing fell apart. So we're, we're working our way through it. And I, and I think the world is learning, like even, this is kind of an odd example to give. I, um, uh, Vladimir Putin apparently gave a speech a few days ago on the 17th and there was a translation that I read today and as I was reading portions of it to other people they were like oh my god is it like he hanging out in our bitcoin spaces right he talks about the money printer literally he does he doesn't use some other metaphor he says mm-hmm. they the money printer and he, mm-hmm. he he doesn't call it clown world but he says that anyone with a you know anyone who's literate can see that these claims that the western leaders are making are are, fa- are, are patently false mm-hmm. and they say they blame me for their inflation right when they've been printing mm-hmm. money because it's putin's price increase so he has mm-hmm. to he has to say it in the first he can't say it's putin's price increase he's gonna say it's my price price increase but and mm-hmm. he's not you know he's not historically a good person he's a murderer mm-hmm. and uh a really a really vicious one but mm-hmm. even even he's seeing okay well we can't we can't go on getting away with the kind of evil in the way that we were doing it before is is the point that i wanted to raise he's like okay we got to get back to some first principles if we're like i don't trust him to be a great guy Mm. but he's at least acknowledging some basics of reality like if you want if you want to do what anything you need energy and you need food people are going to die without food and energy so he's yeah so he's he's further than many of our western leaders who want to destroy food and energy Mm. um and, and he's acknowledging it maybe for political gain or something, but our leaders are lying about it through their teeth or they're too stupid to tell. Anyhow, uh, so I don't want to get negatively emotional here, but I'm saying because I remain very optimistic that with, through this tool as a, for everything that it stands for and everything that it is, as a protest movement, for example, it is a protest movement where we can't be washed away by jackboot thugs and they have to come to us it's not it's not like we're not protesting with signs we're just running our nodes and transferring our value and we'll start exchanging goods uh for bitcoin as as we do this so in like in a sense we've already won but it's not here yet and so for me i i don't know that i'll live to see it i don't know exactly how long all these things are going to take but i can imagine it and that ayn rand had another quote she said uh he who works for the future lives in it today. And maybe again, it's what's the context mm. of that exactly. But I, I can sense the spirit of it, right? Like I know what I'm working towards, this beauty that we've been talking about throughout everything, and it keeps me I going. I think Bitcoiners are living in the future. Yeah. And it's sort of painful waiting mm-hmm. for everyone to catch up. And Yeah, that's okay. That's, um, you know, this is the time we were born in. <laughs> like you mm. have to accept reality. Um, there will be different problems that people in the future have. Right. The, the grass always looks greener on the other side. It's like, oh, the people in the 70s had it so good. Oh, the people who come in the 2050s will have it so good. It's like, you know what? They'll, they had their problems in the 70s and the people in the 2050s will have their problems. We have ours. Let's, let's address ours and not, and not feel envy about what some people who aren't, haven't even been born yet might get. Yeah. You bring up Putin. 
a very uh, interesting man in the 21st century. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do subscribe to the notion that any man can have. Um, let's just. I, I don't know if he's a good, better person. I do think he, he. He seems like a very bad person on a lot of fronts, really heinous fronts. So let's. I'm going to stipulate that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but what I'm trying to paint is even the best person could have some bad qualities. Even the worst person could have some good qualities. Yeah, the um, goodness. And so he goodness said something isn't about groups of people. Right. It's not even about an individual person. Like goodness runs. Um, I think it's Solzhenitsyn who said. Or I'm just saying truthful. I, I just think we're in an information It runs through warfare. your heart at any moment in time. Right. You can be good or evil, and we all are. And so he's he's made some evil choices, undoubtedly, right. in his life. And even if he's completely evil, he could say some interesting things or some yeah. factual things or have some yeah. insightful thoughts or be in a position of power to, to, to yeah. act on those things or react. Um, it's just such a confounding uh, world we live in in terms of trying to ascertain uh, mm -hmm. truth and uh out of current events yeah um and, and uh that's a whole other show um but uh i love sort of how bitcoin is an escape valve not just monetarily economically because i don't think it's about how big your stack is but i think also just in terms of not having to care whether any of this, uh, I'm being subjected to psychological warfare or information mm -hmm. warfare or what is right, what is wrong. Yeah, I can kind of be on my path. This, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and voluntarily interact just keep with following others. your heart. Right. And uh, which is why I want to turn to the final piece of, uh, I'd love to cover tonight and, okay. and final piece final from time. why buy Bitcoin 27 before we get into why Bitcoin is a movement of peace. Um, what was maybe your hypothesis here or what inspired mm -hmm. this? Like, I can't remember and, exactly. I, I wrote this piece. I woke up one morning and I was inspired to write it. I can't remember exactly uh, what drove me to it. I think that there were people talking about if Bitcoin is a weapon or war. It might have been it might have been those discussions that have been going on. Like, is Bitcoin a military tool? But I can't I can't honestly remember at this moment what it was. And I don't want to I don't want to lie. Uh, so I, I just have to tell you, I can't remember what it was. And it was another one of these pieces that just kind of unfolded from deep within my subconscious. As soon as I, um, I, I had this idea, which is the first sentence, I think, of the article. Yeah. You know, people declare war all the time. And Bitcoin's the opposite. So I wanted to declare peace. And I wrote that sentence down and then the rest of it kind of flowed out of me. It needed editing and, and this and that and the other. But I wanted to say this is a declaration of peace. So maybe I should just read it because that's what. Yeah, that's before you read was. it, because uh, yeah. I want to roll out to this. I yeah, want okay. it to stand on its own. Okay. Um, where can people, well, first, thank you so much again, Tomer. Uh, I really appreciate you giving your time to the show and coming on. Mm -hmm our friendship and relationship and, and reconnecting yeah I um I, I value it's that good a lot to see you again like yeah, we're about to say goodbye but mm -hmm. we'll see each other again parting yes. is such sweet sorrow um before we say goodbye and we roll out this this fantastic piece please let people know where they could find you and your work um okay yeah, the best place in. to the two best places to find me maybe three uh twitter i'm always there uh so just tomer strolight on twitter at, at Tomer Strolight, one word, or type in my name. Um, I've got, I, I don't add to it quite as often anymore as I used to because I'm, I'm writing a lot for Swan. So swan.com slash signal is the Swan Signal blog. There's a lot of other contributors there, but I'm the editor in chief. And um, I know that's such a fancy title. I didn't mm. even want it, but it's like, mm. you know, you got to have, it, still working in a corporation, you got to have some title. So I, I edit that page and there's a lot of great colleagues who produce amazing content and people who help get it up there. Um, but I've got quite a few articles of my own on there for people who are looking for me. And then uh, Medium, Tomer Sterlite on Medium. So tomersterlite.medium.com or medium.com slash Tomer So you'll find me at all of those places and there's long lists. There's a big back catalog. And then as, as you had alluded, if you Google for the movie, Bitcoin is generational wealth and put my name after it or put the word YouTube after after that, you'll find 
uh, you'll find the 15 minute film, which I really recommend people watch. It makes me feel good when other people watch it. It's and, a great film. Uh, yeah, thank you. And again, that was a collaborative piece and inspired by somebody else. So I, I was just kind of like a vessel for the vision of Louis Liu and and uh, to hand something over to uh, to Matt Hornick and Adam Hurley, who directed and edited the film together. Um, so that I think those are the most important places. And and if you want to order a physical copy of the book, I'll give you the URL and you can put it in the show notes. Awesome. It's a bit of a mouthful. I, I also want to note before we roll out, um, Sam Callahan was recently yes. on episode 110, Behind Enemy Lines of the Bank of International Sediments. Uh, research at Bitcoin analyst at uh, research Sam. analyst at Swan. Yeah. Uh, I do as well. Bitcoin is a pioneer species with Brandon Quidham. Uh, episode 108. Do I work with the best people in the yeah, world? Yeah, and he was on the roof deck watching yeah. Bitcoin's generational wealth yeah. with us Amazing. in Miami. Yeah, And uh, I know friend of Swan, uh, Jordan Schachtel, was episode 105, Independent mm -hmm. Journalism, The Rise of China and the Pandemic. Yeah. As, yeah. Men, as well as uh, Breed Love has been on the show, yeah. and Gigi, and Jan Pritzker, the CTO yeah. of Swan, episode number two. Yeah. Um, lots more probably. Uh, Swan seems like a force, and, and what I love about it, not only is it a Bitcoin-only focused exchange, uh, there's no sell button. It's an on-ramp. There's on -ramp. a give yeah. Bitcoin it's like an entry. program. It's an entry education. Point. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's important to have um, companies like that in right. the space. So yeah. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing over there. Um, I'll leave it to you okay. for why Bitcoin is a movement of peace. Uh, I think this is really important in terms of uh, kind of the theme building on building blocks of, of what we've been talking about tonight. It was beauty, love, inclusion, humanity, and mm -hmm. obviously peace. All right. Why Bitcoin is a movement of peace. This is a declaration of peace. I will not fight you because I do not need to. I do not want to fight you. One of us might get hurt or even killed, and it might be me. But if I needed to, I would. Thankfully, for both our sakes, I do not. There is yet a nobler reason behind my not wanting to fight you. I want to work with you so that I can show you the best of me and you can show me the best of you. I want to coexist in peace with you. Thanks to Bitcoin, I can. Those who do not know Bitcoin may wonder why solely my knowledge of Bitcoin suffices for me to declare peace unto them. Shalom. Salam. The reason is that I have a shield. My wealth cannot be stolen, so I do not view others as a threat. If they assert themselves as my enemy, I simply laugh them off. What can they do to me? They gain nothing by hurting me. If they kill me, they do not get my Bitcoin. And I want nothing from anyone that they do not freely want to exchange with me. That is because I am a Bitcoiner. I embrace Bitcoin, the inviolable system which only permits consensual exchange. Bitcoin is money that can never be stolen from one who wields it responsibly. And I have learned to wield it responsibly. It is not a weapon, but a shield. I cannot use it to hurt you, and you cannot use it to hurt me. So I declare peace unto you. Whether, you, whether or not you are ready for peace with me, mine is a unilateral declaration. I yearn for the day when you declare the same. Will you take my hand and embrace me in peace? I would rejoice in it, but I can wait. If you are not ready, I have all the time in the world. I have Bitcoin. Who else am I declaring peace upon? Every single person and nation in the whole wide world, and also every government and every company. What are my terms? I have none. Anyone may turn their back to me. I will initiate no violence upon them. So what then, you may object? There is nothing in your offer of peace. Quite the opposite is true. Let me tell you what is in my offer. First, I offer the shield to everyone. I need not surrender it. I will forever have it with me. 
but it is expansive and can protect countless human lives. So I give it willingly to you all, which costs me nothing, but bestows upon us all a tremendous value. So take it. It is also yours. It awaits for whenever you are ready. I will not force this shield upon you, for I come in peace. No man who attempts to force you is with me. It must be your choice. You raise the shield in an act of self-respect and self-assertion to say, what is mine is mine, and no man may take it from me. I offer to guide you on how to wield it so that it truly works as I have promised. I will show you how to know this for yourself without you needing to trust me. I also offer you the very best I have to give. That, however, I do not offer for free. I offer it in trade. So let us trade. Let us do so honestly and rationally. Let us treat each other with respect and decency. Let us form a lifelong relationship for our mutual benefit. If we cannot, that too is fine. We can leave each other in peace and find many others with whom to trade. I do not come alone. With me are all the others who have taken up the shield. We are not perfect, but we are good. And we each wish to work to make this world better through peaceful trade of the best we each have to offer. Haven't you been searching for us all along? We are here. We are ready. We are ready to think. We are ready to work. We are ready to trade honestly and rationally together with you. We are a multitude, but not an army, for we come in peace. Will you join us? We are the free and peaceful people of Earth. And if you will have us, we welcome you. We will respect your decision, whatever it is, and be at peace with you, whatever your choice. What greater cause can you think of than freedom and peace and honesty and respect and perhaps even love? Ours is not some fanciful, naive, and feeble-minded movement of weaknesses and wishes. We know we have to work. We know we have to grasp reality and work in harmony with it. We do not expect something for nothing. But we also do not expect nothing in exchange for something. Those who offer us nothing in exchange for our effort, we simply leave in peace. And we welcome them at any time if they wish to offer us something instead of nothing. Our pursuits are happiness, longevity, and love. Do not laugh at this, should that not be each person's pursuit. Look deep within yourself. Is that not what you desire too? We can find it together in peace. Signed, Former Sterling. I'll uh, see you on the next episode that we do together or someplace else. Take care.